this event is organized through the uh, Network Plus for the decarbonization of heating and cooling as part of a series looking at the different challenges of decarbonizing our heating and cooling sectors. This month, we're delighted to welcome a presentation on the first project funded by the Network Plus, and this project has been called Heat for All, and a presentation covering research taking place at Warwick University. I should say many thanks to both presenters providing their time today. First, we will hear from Dr. Laurent uh, Lu, who's a lecturer from the University of Surrey. The project title is the Economics Informed Optimization Model for Future Equitable Decarbonized Distributed Heating Systems. Now, Dr. Liu is a lecturer from the Center of Environmental and Sustainability at the University of Surrey, and she completed her PhD in Environmental Systems Engineering at the University of Regina. She uh, has multidisciplinary backgrounds in energy and environment, engineering management, and industrial engineering. Laurent's interests uh, are focused on low carbon energy technologies, environmental energy economic systems analysis, and climate change mitigation and adaptation. Okay, thank you, Andy. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Liu Liu from the Center for Environment and Sustainability at the University of Surrey. And it's my great pleasure to introduce our project, Heat for All, an economic informed optimization model for future equitable decarbonized and distributed heating systems. So our team includes Professor Matthew Leach, Dr. Michael Short, Dr. Mona Chipsness, and also we have three really excellent research assistants, Floris, Xiangqi, and Xinyao. And this project is also supported by our partners, Working Borough Council, Pimsway Association for Decentralized Energy, UK Energy Research Center, and National Center for Energy Systems Integration. So uh, let's start with the background. The direct greenhouse gas emissions in building sector accounts for 17% of the total emissions. And to reach the net zero target, the building sector has to eliminate greenhouse gas emissions by transitioning to low carbon heating technologies. And these lower carbon technologies are likely to be more expensive than current heating systems and switching to low carbon heating will impact the lower income household in particular. In 2019, as many as 13.4% uh, of households in the UK were classified as fuel, po fuel power, and the transition to net zero might accelerate fuel poverty if under improper strategy. So how to minimize fuel poverty in the UK? while simultaneously delivering the net zero target is a research question that needs to be answered urgently. So here is our project. So we have two main objectives. First, to establish a systematic analysis framework of heating decarbonization to minimize fuel poverty. And second, to perform a case study and propose technological and policy solutions. So on the left side of this slide, we can see the key components in this framework. So the current available grants are included as the business as euro policy scheme. And besides that, we also introduced no grant scheme and the proposed policy scheme. The only difference between the proposed and business as euro scheme is that we added the flat grants, which has no funding limit and less eligibility requirements. For example, buildings with EPC, D, E, F, and G are all eligible to apply. And for the heating technologies, we considered air source heat pump, electric boiler, and traditional gas boilers. And in terms of the energy efficiency improvements measures, double glazing, loft, quality wall, and solid wall installation are reflected in our study. And also to fully address the fuel poverty issue, we set three economic entities, including central government, local authority, and household, try to review the shifts of costs among them. And in the middle part, is a, com is a proposed three-layer modeling, which combining building stock analysis based on the Cambridge housing model, 
distributed heating system optimization based on mixed, in mixed integer linear programming and economic and environmental impact simulation based on extended input output analysis. And for the case study, we selected walking a modern town in the heart of Surrey, Southeast England. And especially we focused on the social housing in this project. And due to time limit, I won't go through the details of each layer, but you could find all of the information in our publications. Uh, for the distributed heating system optimization, I think it will be helpful to explain the objective function. So the overall objective is to minimize the household cost as we are aiming to address the fuel poverty issue. Uh, so for the social housing, it is energy bills because the local authority will pay for the capital cost. But for other building stock, it will be energy bills and the capital cost after grants are used. And we actually developed two modelings with these two different objective functions. And we also plan to release the work as open source software upon completion to maximize the impacts. And here I would like to briefly introduce the economic and environmental impact simulation through the environmentally extended input output analysis. 97 sectors listed in the original input output table were aggregated into 22 sectors and in which we assume that electric equipment construction gas and electricity are directly related with heating decarbonization. And also considering the energy affordability is closely related with income levels, we attribute the household consumption of final demands into 10 groups based on the family spending in the UK published by the Office uh, for National Statistics. In our project, we assume that the households living in the social housing belong to the lowest, lowest income level. Therefore, the replacement and installation of heating technologies and house installation measures brings about changes in final demand of government consumption and the lowest diesel income groups of household, and which will further induce changes in total output of other sectors and different scopes of greenhouse gas emissions. So I will show this uh, results later. And to briefly introduce how this three-layer heat for all modeling works, we can look at the scenarios and outputs. Uh, besides the basic data, like the parameters of different technologies, energy demand, we paid special attention to these five factors to further explore their impacts on the whole system. As I introduced earlier, we have three future policy schemes. And the second one is minimum emission reduction target, ERT. And this one is a key constraint in the optimization model. And we run the model by traversing from zero to 100% with a total of 25 levels. And for the projected carbon intensity of the grid, GCI, we considered the range of 0 to 15 grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hours. Uh, this is on the basis of the projection of future GCI in the six carbon budget. We also considered the uncertainties on future energy price by running around 20 scenarios on natural gas prices and electricity prices separately. So in total, we proposed 456,000 scenarios through a full combination of the above five factors. And under each scenario, the model provides an optimized combination of heating technologies and insulation measures, cost of different stakeholders, impacts on various industry sectors, and the impacts on multiple scopes of greenhouse gas emissions for the entire social economic systems. And also, if we fix some of the factors, for example, under a given ERT GCI and future energy prices, the model can compare pros and cons of different policy schemes you know, from environmental and economic perspectives for different stakeholders. Or 
under given GCI and future energy prices, the model also functions as a system, systematic decision-making tool to compile decarbonization plans and their different ERTs for each policy scheme for proposing a best bulk heating decarbonization strategy. So now let's move on to the results. In the next few slides, I will only show the results under this scenario, you know, where a policy scheme greenhouse gas emission reduction target, projected carbon intensity of grid and future energy prices are fixed. And this is actually the most ambitious scenario and can only be achieved when carbon intensity of the grid is zero. But let's be ambitious and see what the results. So here uh, we present the optimized selection of heating technologies and insulation measures. And the 1655 social housing are classified into six types according to its energy performance certificates EPC rating and which have you know, different eligibility for certain grants. And the figure in the middle highlighted by green shows the selection of heating technologies under the selected scenario. We can see that no boilers will be installed when ERT is 100%, and only aerosol heat pumps will be installed. And if we're comparing the three policy schemes, the proposed policy scheme tends to retrofit more insulation measures. And also there are uh, several options of heat pumps you know, with different heating parameters and the prices. So therefore, if we're looking at these two figures, the capital investments of air, air source heat pumps are different under different policy schemes, even though they will install the same numbers of heat pumps. And then let's take a look at the cost of different stakeholders. So this slide shows the annualized capital cost investment from central government, which is the grant support, and from local authority, which is the working borough council, and the extra energy bills paid by the households of social housing. The numbers of the inner circle represent the emission reduction targets. So our scenario is actually this small part highlighted in green. And under a business as euro policy scheme, the existing grants are only able to cover a small amount of heat pumps. Those contribute to very limited proportion of the capital investment for installing the heating technologies and the installation measures. Most of the capital investment are undertaken by local authority and the household only pay extra energy bills induced by heating system decarbonization, which is about 340 pounds per household on average. But if this is you know, normal or other building stocks, all of the capital costs covered by local authority will be the cost for households. And now let's expand our analysis to the industrial system. And this figure shows the changes in total output and direct greenhouse gas emissions of different sectors compared with the baseline scenario. So with less gas boilers, the total output, the total outputs of gas sector decreases as expected. And meanwhile, the direct investment in heating technologies and installations, as well as changes in gas and electricity bills. Uh, they all bring about strongest increases in electri electrical equipment, electricity, and construction sectors. And the investments in heating system would stimulate the economy to various extents among sectors. So trends are similar to changes in, in total outputs, as this is directly related in total output with an emission factor. But different responses could be observed you know, as for various emission factors. For example, in this extreme scenario, when GCI is zero, the electricity sector contributes to the majority of industry greenhouse gas emission reduction, even under increased total output. So we can see this you know, from these different colors. And then let's further expand our analysis system to the whole economy. And in our study, we define the whole system greenhouse gas emission as the sum of emissions from household gas consumption 
and the total greenhouse gas emissions of industry system. Since the household electricity emission has been included in industry system when the electricity is generated. And the three columns highlighted here will be the results of this scenario. And we can see that comparing with the greenhouse gas emission reduction of the entire industry system, the greenhouse gas emission reduction caused by natural gas consumption of household is much, much lower. And this further illustrates the importance of considering the environmental impacts of the whole system. Okay, now I hope you all get a sense of the functions of our heat for all modeling. So next I would like to share some interesting results based on sensitivity analysis. The first one is on the emission reduction target. So these two figures display the differences of annualized household energy bills between different policy schemes as GCI falls from 15 to zero grams of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt hour, and ERT decreases from 100% to 0%. And the left figure is a comparison between no grant scheme and business as euro scheme. And the red figure is the differences between business as euro scheme and the proposed policy scheme. We can see that you know, when ERT is close to the upper limit of the emission reduction target, you know, proposed by proposed policy scheme provides the cheapest plan for household and followed by business as a euro scheme and no grant scheme. As the uh, emission reduction targets gets lower, no continuous pattern can be obtained. And this is partly related with the nature of the optimization model and maybe related with our um, relatively simplified and rough design of the policy supports. And here we can see the sensitivity analysis on future energy prices under a certain scenario. And the orange line represents the installation number of air source heat pump. And the blue line shows the installation number of gas boilers. And the upper figure shows the changes of installation number in response to a series of gas price when electricity price is fixed at 0 0.231 pound kilowatt hour. And when gas price, we can see that when the gas price is lower than 0 0.078 pounds per kilowatt hours, the optimized decarbonization plan only chooses air source heat pumps with no gas boiler installed. And the turning point comes when electricity price is three times of gas price. And then a phasing out of air source heat pumps could be observed when the price of gas is lower than that, but the model will stick to have a certain amount of air source heat pump to achieve the minimum emission reduction target, even when the electricity price is more than 20 times higher than the, green, than the gas price. And similarly, the lower figure shows the changes of installation numbers of air source heat pumps and gas boilers in response to a series of electricity price when gas price is fixed. And the turning point when electricity price is three times of gas price is also observed. Okay, so that's all of the results we can show today. And the last section is conclusion and future work. So in general, in this project, we developed the three layer heat for all modeling that could determine optimal technologies and policies to ensure a just energy transition. And we also hope the case study of working could shed light on other regions in the UK when proposing strategies to tackle fuel poverty. And our team will continue our research in this area. In the short term, we will focus on the technology and policy perspective to add more advanced heating technologies in this framework, such as hydrogen, and also to design and simulate more sophisticated and practical policies to inform the decision making. And that's all of my presentation today. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Laura.